So, Fire Emblem Warriors. I, for one, am pretty happy about this announcement. After playing Hyrule Warriors and actually really enjoying it, it I always felt like if any other Nintendo series would work for a Warriors spin-off, it's Fire Emblem. It has a vast array of characters, many different weapon types, centers around fighting against armies. It generally would work quite well. And one thing I really loved about Hyrule Warriors is that it gave the spotlight to a lot of characters from throughout the series, even some relatively obscure ones. So. I'd like to see a similar thing happening here, and so I thought I'd put together a video of my personal picks for characters that I want to see in Fire Emblem Warriors. I want to start off though by going over the characters that I think are pretty much definite to get in, because I'll be ignoring those. The trailer already confirmed Krom, and indirectly confirmed Marth, Corrin, Xander, and Ryoma. So who else? Well, I can be pretty much certain that Ike is going to get in based on his popularity in Smash Brothers. Robin is also extremely likely to get in. And Lucina. And while we're at it, we might want to say Roy is reasonably likely because he has an amiibo. Also, I think Tiki appearing is extremely likely, because in a lot of interviews, she's generally considered the mascot of the series at this point. I'm guessing it'll probably be her younger version, because that's the one that's most iconic to Japanese players. And as much as I don't like to admit it, I'm pretty sure either Faria, Camilla, or both will end up in the game, simply because sex sells. With the definites out of the way, what do I want to see in general? I'd like to see decent representation from across the entire series. Even if each game only gets one character, even if some game's characters are regulated only to DLC, that's fine as long as they're represented. I'd also like to see a variety of swords, axes, lances, bows, and magic users showing up in this game. One thing that always annoyed me about Fire Emblem's representation in Smash Brothers is that every single character who got picked for that game was a sword user. And that gives a lot of people the wrong impression about the series. Fire Emblem is not just about swords. In fact, swords are only one-fifth of all the weapon types available. And that's in the games with the most restricted weapon systems. So, seeing some lance, axe users, that's all pretty good. I'd also like a decent amount of representation from various classes. From some footage that I've seen of earlier Warriors games, there is mounted combat, so we can pretty much assume that mounted characters will be featuring in some way. I'm wondering about flyers though. I get the feeling that flyers might feature, but their flight will be extremely limited so as to not prevent them from being too overpowered. They'll probably be more like constantly hovering rather than actually outright being able to fly. I'd like to see a decent number of villains, because one thing that I really enjoyed with Hyrule Warriors is the villain team-up that happened in the main storyline. Getting to see that in a Fire Emblem setting would be pretty fun. I'd like to see a decent variety of interesting movesets. Now, here's where they might have to take a lot of liberties, because unlike Hyrule Warriors, where every character could be extremely unique, Fire Emblem, by definition, is a game where, by dividing characters into classes, a lot of characters play the same way. That's just basically how the game works. So, finding a way to differentiate characters, they're going to have to take a lot of liberties moveset-wise. So, in choosing characters for my suggestions, I'm going to choose some characters who I think would make for interesting movesets, if I can. So, let's get started. I'm going to start at the bottom of the series and work my way up to the most recently released game, going through each game and giving my recommendations from that game. And just a disclaimer, this video was made before the 18th Fire Emblem Direct went up, so I have no idea who's going to be in this game at all. So, starting with Marth's very first games, my first pick here is Sheeta. I mean, if Marth's getting in, you may as well include his main love interest. Sheeta was a lot of firsts for the series, being the first ever Pegasus Knight, and also, like I said, being the love interest of the first main character in the series. But for her time, Sheeta was actually pretty radical. She wasn't just some damsel in distress, Sheeta could actually fight, and fight really, really well at that. In pretty much every game she's appeared in, Sheeta has been considered one of the most overpowered characters in the game. So I'd say she definitely deserves a spot on a roster like this. 
Seriously, if you have Marth but no Sheeta, it's kind of like having Link but no Zelda. Seeing as Tiki is pretty much guaranteed to get in, I'm going to focus on another member of the Dragon Tribe, Zane. I'm mainly choosing Zane here for the sheer moveset potential that he has. For those who don't know, Zane is of an extremely weird class. He's basically Ditto from Pokemon, but in Fire Emblem. He transforms into other characters in your army, and basically becomes an exact copy of them, being able to use their weapons, their class, their stats, everything. Now having him actually work like this in a Warriors game would be kind of strange, but I feel like a moveset where he can transform between various different characters at will, and just use a bunch of different movesets on the fly, or a moveset where he just transforms into different characters as part of his different moves, would be really fun. It also might be a way to get more obscure character representation from this game in, as he could turn into a bunch of characters who might not be popular enough to be fighters in their own right, but can still get referenced as part of his moveset. As far as villain representation goes, I think it's at least somewhat likely that we'll be seeing Nadius as a giant boss. Either him or Grima, they're both pretty much the same thing. And I feel like Garnef is also very likely to be a villain representative, being pretty much the very first major villain in the series, and iconic because of that. He was the first evil sorcerer out to rule the world archetype, so yeah, he inspired a lot of later characters. Now, I would normally suggest Camus here as well, as a tragic villain representative, and for his time, Camus was also quite radical, because back then it was rare that video games even had a plot, much less antagonist with actual depth, but here you had this guy, who was actually somewhat sympathetic, even though he was on the opposite side to you, and yet you still had to fight him anyway. However... Xander is very similar to him, both in appearance and in personality, and since it's very likely that Xander will be in, I think it's likely Kamu probably won't. But I don't know, they might surprise us. Next we have Fire Emblem Gaiden, and my pick from this one might seem kind of weird, but there's a reason for it. It's Sonya. No, not Sonya from FE7, although admittedly she might also work as kind of like a Seer-type character. But Sonya from this game, who was a member of the Witch class. Well, technically she turned into a mage when you recruited her, but uh, let's just consider her original class here. Now, those of you who've played Fates, especially online, will probably know how ridiculous the warp skill is, and how crazily overpowered warping witches are. But wouldn't it be really fun on a Warriors character moveset to have a witch who just teleports all over the place as part of her attacks? That just sounds like it could be pretty interesting and fun, so that's why I picked her. Now the third game in the series, Marth's sequel game, Mystery of the Emblem. The main issue that I have with picks here is that the vast majority of the cast already appeared in the first game, and while there were some characters who took on totally new roles, I feel like there were roles that I've got better picks for them from later in the series. So, next up is Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War, and I know a lot of people are thinking that I'm going to suggest Sigurd. I'm kind of not, because we already have enough blue-haired sword-wielding lords in the series, and we all know Marth and Ike are going to get in, so in some ways I feel like Sigurd's just too similar to them. Unless he fights Mounted. But I digress. The character that I would pick here most of all would be Lewin or Sed. Either of those two will work, being the two canonical Forset he uses. Now, they are some of my favourite characters in the entire series, so I am a bit biased here. But, well, they're actually the first mage pick that I've mentioned, and I would like there to be a lot of mages in this game. But also, I feel they really fit with a Warriors game, because they pretty much are a Warriors game in their original appearance. For those who don't know, Forseti gives a ridiculous bonus of plus 20 to speed. So, basically what would happen with these two is, you'd park them in front of an enemy army, enemy phase would end, no more enemy army. That's basically how they work. And that's basically how a Warriors game works, so they fit in pretty well. Though really, any legendary weapon wielder from this game would work as a pick, so I'd be happy with pretty much anyone. But as for the non-legendary weapon users that I'd like to see in, well, there's Ira. Ira is very important for the history of the Fire Emblem series, 
because she was the first ever playable Swordmaster in the series. Navarre from the original games, he actually promoted to Hero. He was only retconned into a Myrmidon in the remakes. Not only was Ira the first playable Swordmaster, she was also the first member to use the Astra skill, which has become pretty iconic of Swordmasters later on in the series. Ira also always tends to be a very popular character from this game. Despite being the only first generation female who is not confirmed to survive the halfway point of the game, people insist that she survived because she's just that awesome, and I would agree. As far as villains go, Arvis would be pretty interesting to see. He's now one of those villains that's a good mix of both tragic and moral event horizon crossing. And, well, a certain spoilerific thing, let's just say that he's one of the first villains in the series to actually, well, do something, does make him pretty important from a historical standpoint. This would also give more magical representation as well. I'm not sure whether they take from his Generation 1 incarnation, where he was more of a mage, or his Gen 2 incarnation, where he was a big, bulky, armoured emperor who also used magic, but also used swords. Now on to the mid-cool Thrakia 776. Now, I will admit this is not my favourite game in the series by a long shot, so a lot of the characters in it are not as memorable to me, and the few that are already appeared in Fire Emblem 4 and were suggested there anyway. But I haven't suggested an axe user yet, so Orson, come on down! Orson is technically not that important of a character in the grand scheme of things, just a fighter who you recruit at the very beginning of the game, but he's pretty famous for having a ridiculously good personal weapon, essentially a hand axe and a killer axe all in one. He tends to be one of the more memorable axe users in the whole series to people who've played this game, so I guess that's reason enough for him to be in, maybe? It's probably just wishful thinking. He's a bit obscure for this list and I don't really think he'll get in, but it would be kinda cool if he did. Just a couple of quick honourable mentions here. Neither of these two is really that groundbreaking moveset-wise, but if the game wanted a hilarious joke character, either Homeros or Shannon could work. Though Homeros is much more of a lethal joke character. Now we come to Fire Emblem 6. A lot of characters in this game are deliberately almost outright clones of characters in earlier games, for example, Lilina, while I kind of like to see Lilina fight alongside Roy, she is personality-wise almost identical to Sheeta. And as amazing as Percival is, blonde-haired paladin, yeah, Xander already has that covered. But there was one character in FE6 who always stood out to me, and that was its pretty much major antagonist, Zephiel. I feel like Zephiel has the most depth out of all of the evil king type characters in the series. Rather than just being brainwashed or manipulated, he's completely in his own mind. He's just had such a horrible life that he's just broken to the point where it led him to these actions. But in addition to being more of a sympathetic villain representation, he also has some pretty awesome potential as a really great playable character. Because, well, anyone who's seen how amazing his animations are in FE6, yeah, that would make for a pretty good fighter, just this king in gigantic armor with a weapon that's basically a staff that turns into a giant sword that shoots lightning. What's not to like about that? Now we come to the first Fire Emblem release in the West, Blazing Sword. Now, I'm sure a lot of picks that I give from this game will be very similar to a lot of other players, because this one's by far the most requested game to have appearances by Western fans, it being the first Fire Emblem to be released outside Japan. Now, I personally am not getting my hopes up, because while this game is very highly regarded in the West, it's actually not that popular in Japan, and remember that this game is being developed in Japan, so the chances of seeing representatives from here are quite a bit less likely. But anyway, wishful thinking time. Number one, to absolutely no one's surprise, is Lin. I know that Lin has a lot of nostalgia for many people since, to most of them, she was the first main character they ever saw in the series. But, to me, she has a lot of uniqueness as well. She has a pretty unique background for a main heroine, being from Sakai, the Plains, and having a stat build that's more like a Myrmidon slash Swordmaster than your average Lord. Having a signature weapon that's more of an Eastern style sword as opposed to a medieval style one, and being able to use bows in addition to swords on promotion, which is actually quite a unique combination on an on foot unit. 
Also, she's got some pretty crazy critical animations, especially in her promoted version. So, that could be good to make a big flashy moveset out of. Plus, I still think the whole sword and bow combo has a lot of interesting potential. It's, like I said, not something that you often see on an on-foot class in the series, so it definitely would be pretty cool. Next up is Hector. Now, once again, we have yet another blue-haired lord, and the other problem with Hector is that by the developer's own admission, Ike's personality was directly based off of his, so having both him and Ike in the game might feel a little bit redundant. But we need more axe users, and Hector is the only main character in the series to have axe as their primary weapon, so it kind of makes sense to include him. Or at least it makes sense to assume that if they are going to include an axe user, it's probably going to be him. Now that I think about it, I can actually really imagine Hector having a similar moveset to Darunia from Hyrule Warriors, being that big, slow, mighty glacier type character, who hits extremely hard and can toss entire groups of foes aside with a single hit. And that's pretty much all I need to say about him. So, my other main pick from this game is Jafar, and I'm kind of jumping the gun here, either Jafar or Volk. Volk, of course, being from Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, not this game, but both of them would serve pretty much the same role, to the point where I'd only really be happy with one of them being in. Both of them would be representatives of the Assassin class, which would be pretty cool to have a moveset based around, considering they also have some of the flashier critical animations in the series. That definitely seems to fit for this kind of game. Also, they could be our dagger representative among the weapon types. And perhaps to represent lethality, they could have some kind of super move that instantly kills an enemy commander, Probably it wouldn't work on actual named characters, but on generic commanders that you often see in bases or things like that. Being able to run in and instantly one-shot them and just take the base for yourself immediately, it'd have to be a very limited move, but it'd fit the role of the Assassin class in a way, so it'd be kind of cool to see something like that. And my other pick from this game, Arthos. Arthos is pretty much the closest Fire Emblem has to Dumbledore or Gandalf, in fact, his backstory is eerily similar to Dumbledore in a lot of ways. But I completely digress here. The main reason for Arthos is that he is, well, an insanely overpowered character in gameplay. He's one of the few examples in the series of someone who's a legendary hero in the backstory, whose stats actually deliver once he finally joins your army. Arthos can practically solo the final chapters of Blazing Sword all by himself, and his really powerful magic, his very flashy animations, that could really fit for a character in a game like this. He also has S ranks in all three offensive types of magic, which could make for some very cool moveset potential. Having light, dark, and fire, thunder, wind, all of them together would be pretty awesome. As for a few honorable mentions, Blazing Sword also has quite a lot of pretty good antagonists. Linus, Lloyd, any of the morphs, I'd be happy if any of them got in. I really can't give any specifics here, just someone. Any of them would be pretty cool. Now on to Sacred Stones, and my first pick from this game is someone... I don't know, maybe not really exactly unconventional, but someone that I just kind of thought up on a whim, who might be pretty fun. LaRachel. I'm actually not really sure how to pronounce her name, but anyway. Firstly, this would give a mounted mage representative. But the other cool thing is that her personality is absolutely insane, and just so hilarious. To anyone who hasn't played Sacred Stones, I'd highly recommend that you look up some of her dialogue, because it's pretty amazing. I mean, the closest thing I'd describe it as would be a female Owain, but even that isn't quite accurate. It's just, it has to be seen to be believed. She is really fun, and just such a hilarious character but also one who's really competent in battle as well, so seeing her would be pretty awesome. Secondly, well, I guess I kind of have to mention Seth here. Seth is something of a mimetic badass within the fandom. He's generally considered to be one of the most broken, if not the most broken, Jagan character in the whole series. One who starts out great and ends up great, and is just downright completely ridiculous and can pretty much solo the whole game. So that would kind of fit for a Warriors game, but also, Seth has a pretty good design overall too, and a pretty good personality too, so he might fit as a mounted representative, maybe make him focus more on Lancers to differentiate him from the inevitable Xander. Sacred Stones also has a lot of good antagonists, but the one that I'd really bring up here is Lion, or Leon, but I've always called him Lion. 
Anyway, just as Zephyl is a rare example of a more sympathetic Evil King character with depth, Lion is an example of a more sympathetic Evil Sorcerer character with depth. At least on one of the roots of the game. He's also got a pretty good unique class and pretty nice magic animations, so he could work as a pretty flashy mage. My main reason for picking him though is, I could really see him, I mean at least if he's not in his uh, possessed persona, but I could really see him acting as a only sane man in a council of villains. That'd be pretty good to see. Moving on to Path of Radiance, I'm going to give a quick mention to Titania for similar reasons to Seth, but in a lot of ways Titania's personality stands out even more than his does, and she's also one of the rare examples of a female Jagan in the series, and also a mountain axe user, which immediately differentiates her from other mountain characters. She'd be pretty nice to see. Now, these games have my favourite cast of characters in the entire series, both between Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, so I'd take a long time if I was mentioning all of my picks from here. But the main one that I want to draw attention to is any Lagoos Royal. Any of them. I don't care which it is, they all pretty much serve the same purpose. So I know we're probably definitely going to be getting a Manakeet character, but I'd like a Beast Tribe character to be represented as well. And the Lagoos Royals would be the best for that because they can transform and untransform at will. You can make a pretty fun moveset out of just punching and kicking people in human form and then transforming into beast form mid-combo. That'd be kind of cool to see. But also, the Lagoos Royals have a lot of presence in the story. Anyone who's played these games, these characters are just so memorable because they just do so much in the game's plotline, they're just awesome all around, and it'd be great to see any of them, really. I just realised that if they did include Naysala, they could have him use Girahim's mechanic from Adventure Mode in Hyrule Warriors, where he starts on your side and then backstabs you at the worst possible moment. Because hey, that totally fits Naysala. I'm always going to have to go with the fairly obvious suggestion from this game and say the Black Knight. If Ike ends up in this game, and I'm almost positive that he will, it only makes sense to have his arch enemy in there as well. And well, he only ended up as a me costume in Super Smash Bros, so now's his chance to get more representation. A lot of people have said that they can really see the Black Knight as a Lubu type character. That super powerful enemy general who terrifies everyone else with his mere presence, and the moment that he shows up on the battlefield, everyone is like, run, run away, you don't want to fight him head on. Which is literally how the Black Knight works in Path of Radiance, so, uh, seems pretty perfect. I feel like as far as Radiant Dawn representatives, we're pretty likely to see Mikhaya or Soth. Mikhaya I actually wouldn't mind, because it would give another magic representative, and you could do some pretty good things with her moveset, with all being light magic. I just hope that she doesn't end up too similar to Zelda or Lana from Hyrule Warriors. Mikhaya is a very contentious character within the fandom, but a lot of the hate on her seems to be dying down these days, so it might be a good time to include her. And well, we skip straight to Awakening here because all the rest of the games between these two are remakes. So, Awakening representative. Firstly, I'm going to be suggesting someone a little unconventional, but bear with me. Donald. There is a reason for this. I think that Donald could have a very interesting potential moveset. Have him start out as a relatively weak villager, maybe with a more comical joke character type moveset. But, once he gets a certain number of kills, Donald transforms into a powerhouse who can annihilate entire armies effortlessly. Characters like that, like Phoenix Wright in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, they've always been quite fun to me, and I feel like you could do that quite well in a game like this with someone like Donald. But, there is one character who is probably my most requested one for this game. If only because a game like this is literally perfect for them. And that character is... Owain. Think about it. Owain writes stories about him being an epic one-man army who destroys hundreds of enemies without breaking your sweat. He has a love of theatrics. And can you imagine just how excited he'd get to have the opportunity to actually fight alongside the legendary heroes of old? Come on, a game like this is literally his dream come true. 
You also have interesting moveset potential, because you could take from both his regular Myrmidon moves, and also his Odin Dark Persona, and maybe work in a bit of Dark Magic as well, or have him able to switch between the two classes on the fly. I cannot think of any character more perfect for this game than Owain, and considering how absurdly popular he is, I get the feeling he might get in anyway, so I'd be glad for that. And now we come to Fates. So, my first recommendation might seem a little obvious, but I'll just go for it anyway. Takumi. The main reason being that I definitely want some bow representation in this game. Having an exclusive archer fighting hordes of enemies, it would be kind of an interesting moveset. I have heard that earlier Warriors games have had archer type characters, so we know that kind of moveset works for this kind of game. And well, of all the archers in the series, Takumi is probably one of the most famous, both for being an infamous game breaker in battle, and for just how popular he is and how much focus that he gets in story. Speaking of which, certain plot details lend themselves to some interesting possibilities for him, either as a superpowered transformation or as a kind of super move. Anyway, I may get flamed quite a bit for the next request that I'm going to have, but hear me out for a second. Garon. Now, I know he's very controversial as a villain, but the main reason why I've chosen him is because... Well, like I've said for a lot of characters, moveset potential, but though it's particularly important here. Considering a lot of plot reveals, Garon has a lot of potential for a very interesting and unique moveset as a fighter. In fact, he could easily double both as a playable fighter and as a gigantic boss. I can see a really, really crazy moveset out of this guy, which will certainly be a lot of fun to play. One other thing is, going back to Hyrule Warriors, one somewhat unexpected thing that that game did is it actually helped quote-unquote fix the personalities of a lot of characters that weren't particularly popular in their original incarnations, namely Xant and Fi. Perhaps Garen might benefit from that kind of treatment. Fates does have several other characters that I wouldn't mind seeing just because they'd represent some of its more unusual new classes. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing a maid representative, a ninja, or especially a mechanist. That would be pretty cool. Now, finally, a representative for the entire series as a whole. Anna. And I don't just mean the Anna from Awakening or Fates, no. I mean RNG Goddess Anna, the one from the end of Apotheosis who is heavily implied to be an outright deity. And I'd like to have an Anna who summons all the other Annas from all the other games in the series as some kind of super attack. Think like Mega Man's Final Smash in Super Smash Bros. 4, but like just with Annas. It'd be really cool to see all of the different Anna designs from all the games just getting representation in one attack, and it'd be a great way to nod to the history of the series. Also, it would be pretty hilarious. But this ends my specific picks from this game. So in conclusion, there's a lot of potential with this game, and I'm certainly looking forward to it. No matter who ends up being in it, I'm sure they'll all be very fun to play as. I really enjoyed Hyrule Warriors, so I'm pretty sure this game will be very fun too. Looking forward to finding out more information about this game as it comes.